Welcome to the Delphia stand at the Dusseldorf Boat Show and another world premiere. Now, for those of you who don't know the Delphia brand, they are part of the enormous French Beneteau group, but they are a manufacturer based in Poland and they are specializing in really good value for money inland waterways boats. And as you can probably see from the sign down here, they are on, on a mission to turn 100% electric. Now, electric boats aren't always a hugely popular subject, but for inland waterways, they make an awful lot of sense. You don't need a huge amount of power because you're only ever going to be cruising at sort of somewhere between four and maybe eight knots maximum. But what you do want is really quiet cruising, lovely clean <laughs> propulsion with no exhaust emissions, no smells, and really effortless cruising. And of course, because you're not going quickly, you don't need an enormous amount of battery reserve. So on board here, we'll show you exactly what that means, how that works, and the kind of range you're likely to get. So let's jump on board and take a closer look. The design of this boat is by a very well-known English designer, Tony Castro, and the brief was to create a really well thought out but affordable inland waterways cruising boat. Now this comes in a variety of different models. This is the open lounge version. You can see there is also a lounge top model with a kind of extended hard top and a full sedan model that will be completely enclosed. But this particular one, this is obviously the open lounge model. And starting at the stern, you can see we've got a fixed bathing platform. But because this is going to be an inland waterways boat, rather than actually putting a tender on here, it is a land tender in the form of a bicycle. And that makes a lot of sense. When you're on a canal, the best way to get around is on a bicycle. So you can see that has a, a mount that you can lock it onto to keep it nice and safe and then you can cycle to the nearest town to stock up on supplies or have a little ride around the countryside. Now we've got a half-facing bench here. It's one of those sliding backrests, so you can pull it back and sit on the front of it and be part of the wider open cockpit or slide it forward and have a lovely little half-facing bench so that you can sit there and watch the water streaming out behind. Now, for a boat of this length, it is 10 metres, so around about 32 feet, it has a simply enormous open cockpit. There is seating that runs almost all the way around this. Now, you can see this table does fold in half, as does that one. And this section of seating here also lifts out, so if you want to be have easy access to the side deck on this side, you can lift that out, but equally, you can have a full wrap of seating all the way around. So this is RCD rated for up to 10 people and you could very comfortably sit 10 people around this cockpit. There's another small little seat tucked in here and as well as the tables for dining, you have got a wet bar area. So this is the only galley on board. So effectively it's kind of an outside galley rather than a wet bar. Has just got the one gas ring burner there's a small sink, there's a fridge under here, and there is a second drawer fridge over here. Now, as we come further forward, there's quite a clever arrangement going on here. This is obviously set up now to join part of this seating area here, but if I can do this one-handed, get my fingers in, I might have to just help out. There we go, get my hand under there. This also swings over and becomes a raised navigation bench. So you can see that when it swings up, these hinges also lift it up to give you an elevated view when you're sitting facing forward. But that's really nice to have that functionality. It means you can have a couple of extra forward facing seats when you're motoring along, but also put it down and join in at the same level as everybody else when you're at rest. The helm seat is even higher, that's raised a bit higher above that, again to give a better, more elevated view. And that's because this is set, the deck head is at really quite a high level. The coach roof is right up here to create more headroom and volume down below. So it's a bit of a hop up onto the seat itself, but there is a footrest down here. So when I hop up, you can see that my feet do 
fall very nicely on that support bar there. Now for a boat that's only ever designed to do around eight knots, it is a remarkably sporty looking helm. It's almost like a carbon fiber three-piece wheel. Not exactly gonna be racing around the corners in that, but nevertheless, it does look rather stylish. We've only got a, quite a small Simrad navigation screen. That makes a lot of sense because most of the time you'll be going either right or left on the canal, or you might be making way across a, uh, a larger lake or something, but you're not gonna be requiring detailed navigation in the way you would if you were cruising offshore. Now we've got controls for the Torquedo electric motor. There is a choice of either electric or diesel power, but the aim is to go all electric before long, so they're very much encouraging people to consider electric, which on the inland waterways makes a lot of sense. You don't need a tremendous amount of speed. You don't need a huge range. What you do want is really nice, quiet cruising, and electric will give you exactly that. Also good to see that there is both a bow and a stern thruster. When you've only got a single shaft drive engine, you don't have the control that you would if you had two separate ones. You haven't got the ability to, to twist it on the spot. So having a bow and stern thruster just gives you the maneuverability you really need, particularly when you're coming into a tricky berth. Now you can see there's really well protected side decks, particularly along this starboard side is really tall Walk. This is at hip height. We've got guardrails on top of that. Lovely wide walkway that takes you up. There's one step up to the foredeck. And here we've got a non slip gel coat on here, so you've got good grip even when you stand up here. Big sun pad on the foredeck area. A couple of cup holders either side. Steaming light. And check out how wide the beam is and how far forward it's carried. You can see it's got a properly squared off bow. And that makes a lot of sense too. It creates more volume down below for the cabin. It's not like you're racing along. You're not gonna have any problems with bouncing over waves, creating a really uncomfortable ride because of that broad beam forward. You're only ever gonna be doing displacement speed. So there's no concerns about slamming or bashing. So you might as well create as much space as you can. Now, similar width side deck down this side, taking you back down to the cockpit. The only difference is that you haven't got steps here taking you down so that you have a raised bulwark. This is much more at kind of ankle height, carries a bit further back, but you have got grab rails all around the windscreen to help guide you down. And then the steps are further back here, taking you back onto that stern platform or through into the cockpit if you remove that seating. So you can see there is a handy storage area there. That is a draining locker. So you can put wet kit in there if you like. Very handy to have. And then come back round into the cockpit. And let's go downstairs and have a look down there. So thanks to that really tall coach roof, you have got good headroom down here. There's a couple of steps down and that leads you forward into the main cabin, and that's in the bow, and here you really can see the benefit of that beam being carried so far forward. See how wide that is there. It does taper just a little bit. You can just see the bed slightly shaved off in either corner. Still plenty wide enough. I guess the only slight bore with that is that you can't use standard fitted sheets. You'll need to have either bespoke made or loose sheets, otherwise you're gonna have a whole load of sheet dangling over the edge. Now, it's set up as a double at the moment, but if you have a look under here, you see they are in fact separate mattresses, and if you can just lift that up and swing it to one side, you can have two separate V-shaped berths. Now, not the deepest mattresses I've ever seen. They are only so deep, so possibly not as comfortable as a better upholstered mattress. But as with everything on this boat, they've taken a very conscious decision to keep the price down, to keep it affordable, and make sure that people aren't priced out of the market just by dint of trying to be smarter and more upmarket and more prestigious than it needs to be. This is much more about functionality, affordability, and getting afloat with your family and enjoying the experience. Got a bit of storage in here. Got a locker there, we've got 
a locker under there, little sort of hanging wallet there, and these shelves there. And again, notice how much light there is in here. We've got big eye level windows here, slightly higher ones up here. There's a skylight over here. I think the sunbed cushion is on it and another big window here. And again, because you're not hammering through the seas at speed, you don't need a super stiff structure, so you can probably afford to have larger windows. And that's exactly what you want on an inland waterways boat. You want lots of light, lots of space, lots of volume. More storage here. And then moving aft, you can have a choice. You can either have a second guest cabin here with one or possibly two beds running under the cockpit there. In this instance, they've chosen to spec it out as a, a, an owner's office, if you like. And that, you can see that making a rather nice floating office. You can have your computer station up there, screen in there. You can see there's a stool to prop yourself up on. Again, lots of natural light and ventilation coming in through here and down there. Extra storage there. Quite nice to have that option. And then over on the other side, there is the heads compartment. And again, full standing headroom in here. You can see there's plenty of clearance above me. And there is the bathroom. Now again, full standing headroom. We've got a separate shower compartment over on this side here. It's a pull out shower that just simply lifts out of there and clips in to a holder up there. And there are Perspex doors that come across, so that is nicely protected. And then we've got the loo over on this side, sink, and under here, rather a handy little storage unit, a bit like a cutlery tray, but you can easily imagine your toothbrushes or toothpaste or bits and bobs going in there. And again, a bit more storage under there. So coming back out into the cockpit, Let's talk motorization, and I use that word advisedly because this is an electric motor rather than a diesel version, and rather helpfully they've put a glass screen in here. Sadly that isn't a standard fit, normally you do just get a lifting hatch, but this enables us to see exactly what's going on, and what you can see there is a Torquedo deep blue electric motor. It's a 55 kilowatt motor, equivalent to around about 80 horsepower. So really pretty similar in power to the 110 horsepower diesel option that uh, is the standard fit. But with this motor, you can have one or two batteries. I think the batteries are around about 40 kilowatt hours. And I'm told that if you're cruising along at a gentle kind of four or five knots, you should get somewhere between eight to 10 hours cruising. Now, on an inland waterway, that is more than enough for a day's cruising, so really, quite enough range. You're not, not going to be doing miles and miles for hours and hours. You're just going to poodle along, you do a couple of hours cruising, stop for lunch. You might well be able to charge it up at a lunch stop, but certainly when you get to your marina berth overnight or a town quay, it's provided you can find some kind of shore power, you can plug it in and charge it in overnight, no problem at all. So, the cost this particular boat, the starting price is 163,700 euros. That's for the diesel motor, fully equipped as this one is with the electric motor and two batteries. It's more like 303,000 euros. But what I like about it is it's not trying to be anything it isn't. It's a simple, unpretentious boat. The fit and finish isn't particularly high quality. It's got everything you need but it's not over-spec'd or over-engineered or over-detailed and just ending up costing a stupid amount of money. They've gone for an affordable, simple, usable boat, maximising on the fun and the experience rather than the fit and finish. So let me know what you think about it. Please do leave your comments below. Thank you very much for watching and I look forward to presenting the next boat.